Hey you guys, Jem here once again with another book review. This time it's for Once in a Blue Moon by Ellen Schraber. At least I think that's how you say her last name. She did the Vampire Kisses series, which I really should read. Um, and this book I rate an 8 out of 10. I was going to say something, hold up. I rated an 8 point... Um, an 8 out of 10, and I thought it was good. I liked it. The romance in it was cute. But then there were just parts that frustrated me so badly. Anyway, on to the synopsis. Beware of a kiss under the full moon. It will change your life forever. Celeste Parker is used to hearing scary stories about werewolves. Legends Run is famous for them. She's used to everything in the small town until Brandon Maddox moves to Legends Run and Celeste finds herself immediately drawn to the handsome new student. But when after an unnerving visit with a psychic, she encounters a pack of wolves and gorgeous and en enigmatic Brandon, she must discover whether his transformation is more than legend or just a trick of the shadows in the moonlight. Her best friends may never forgive her if she gives up her perfect boyfriend Nash for Brandon who's from the wrong side of town but she can't deny her attraction or the strong pull he has on her. Brandon may be Celeste's hero or he may be the most dangerous creature she could encounter in the woods of Legends Run. Psychic predictions, general generations old secrets, a town divided, and the possibility of falling in love with a hot and heroic werewolf are the perfect formula for what happens once in a full moon. Alright, I might... This is a um, spoilers book. A spoilers review. So, this girl, um, as you heard, Celeste. I love that name. Um, Celeste has the perfect boyfriend, Nash, who is the star player of the football and basketball team. And then her two best friends, Ivy and Abby, are dating um, Nash's two best friends, Dylan and Jake. So it's like them as a sixum. That sounds weird, sixum. Um, and and they have this perfect relationship and everything. Well, not really perfect, because Nash and Celeste's relationship isn't really too good, because Nash really only thinks about himself, and so it's like. He doesn't re he's not really a thoughtful guy. He has a good side in him, you know. Like really deep in him. But he does he's not really too thoughtful about others too much. Because well that's how um Celeste feels. Cause Nash the only dates Nash and Celeste go on are to his basketball games where he's out on um the court. And she's just in the bleachers cheering for him. I mean, that's just... Ugh. Guys like that. I'm sorry. No offense. <laughs> anyway. And so this guy, Brandon Maddox. Maddox. Travis Maddox. Um, comes into the picture. And he saves her one night when she's, like, walking home from a psychic in Riverside. Actually, the town that they live in, Legends Run, is split between West Side and East Side. East Side's like all the more suburban area, while like um, the West Side is more rural. And they also call the West Side Riverside, too. And so she was walking home from West Side, which um, the psychic, it was because of a dare. Celeste, Ivy, and Abby were. Um, at a psychic's place in Westside. And so Ivy and Abby left in the car and Celeste decided to walk home because her house was only like 20 minutes from um, Westside. And then a blizzard just comes out of nowhere and she and then she's surrounded by a pack of wolves. Then she is saved by Brandon who hero heroically comes in to save her and is bitten by a wolf. And so that's how things start. She gets more involved with Brandon and 
her and Brandon have a relationship while she breaks up, um, while her and Nash are, like, not even together, are not together anymore. And then things start to happen throughout the story. Like, people saying they spot a werewolf when it really, they didn't. It was just, um, Nash pulling a prank on the town, um, disguising himself as a werewolf because he wanted to get Celeste back. And it was... They were getting closer again, but they weren't together, you know? And Ivy um, wants all of them to be together again. And they she's, she's just trying to push Nash and Celeste together, which I got really frustrated with. Like, if the girl doesn't want to be with him, if she's not happy with him, stop trying to make it so that she is when she isn't. Anyway, um, and so she's still in a relationship with Brandon and in the end of the book, um, they find, um, he's, like, changing, Brandon's changing and turning on the full moon, and Celeste is there, and Nash apparently is in, like, the, um, a couple of yards away, and he sees, um, Brandon changing into a werewolf and runs away to his car, which I really do think that Nash is a douche. Because he's just trying so hard to get um, Celeste back. But she doesn't want to be with him because of what he was like in the past. And, like, some guys change. Now, trust me, I do believe that some guys do change. But this guy is just too desperate. He really is just too desperate. There, Any girl would be lucky enough to be his girlfriend. And he's just, like, so desperate that he would just try to ruin uh, ruin and turn the whole town into a panic just to try to get one girl back. I think that's just unthoughtful. Not thoughtful at all. Because, like, what about other people? Have you thought about what they would think and you're just, like, thinking about one girl? I know it's, like, how I'm, like, judging this to the extreme, but seriously... I mean, if you want the girl back, like, just try doing it in your own way instead of, like, dressing up as a werewolf running around town and putting yourself on the news and having everybody, like, all panicky on lockdown and everything. It was just insane. Anyway, apparently I found out that this is a trilogy just a few minutes ago because I was looking it up. And I want to read the second book now just to find out what happens next because Nash... I, I just want, throughout the book, I just wanted to strangle him, I swear. I wanted to strangle him because of how, like, inconsiderate he is and unthoughtful and ugh. And then there's Ivy. It's like, if she, if Celeste doesn't want to be together, doesn't want to be with Nash, stop trying to push her to be with him. Honestly, what if you... What if you were trying to push your best friend into being with a guy when she wasn't even happy with the guy? And then you're just like trying to make everything pitch. You're just trying to make everything perfect when it's not because she is unhappy. And I thought, and you guys are like best friends and you're just causing her unhappiness. It's just not right. <laughs> Sorry, um, a lot of my opinion there. But... I thought the romance between Brandon and um, Celeste was really cute. Um, and that's all I really have to say about this book. Once again, an 8 out of 10. It's the first book in the trilogy, apparently. Which I didn't know. But anyway, I really liked it. It was cute. And look how the chapters start. It's like a moon. And then it's like dark. And then it just goes to regular pages. Anyway, that's all I have to say about this book. Um, I am still actually currently reading The Girl in the Seal Corset. Um, I think it's good so far. I'm Because this paperback has a bonus book included, the prequel, called The Strange Case of Finley Jane. So I'm actually currently on the prequel in the beginning of, of the first book right now. And I really like it so far. I don't know. It's like, it's something supernatural. I don't know what she is. I don't think she's a vampire, though. But, and not a werewolf. She's n just not something typical. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Um, I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye!